This is a demonstration of using the TI-84 graphing calculator emulator to demonstrate how to do different problems for your statistics class. We're going to be specifically doing problems dealing with the binomial probability distribution. So let's get started. First you'll notice that the TI-84 is on my screen and I'm going to use the view button and then the detached LCD to bring the screen front and center and if you're projecting this onto a whiteboard or onto a screen the students will be more easily able to see what's happening on the screen here. In this problem we're looking at a 10 question true false test and ask specifically what is the likelihood of passing the test with a grade of at least 70 percent if you guess on every question. To do this problem, we're going to be using the list editor, and that's located under the stat key, enter. And what I've done here is to input the values 0 through 10 into list 1. These are the values that represent the event of getting none right in 10 guesses, 1 right, 2 right, etc. Next, we're going to look at the binomial probability distribution as it relates to each one of these events. To do that, I'm going to use the right arrow to go to list 2 and then the up arrow to go to the heading of list 2. When I do that, the formula bar below enables me to formulate this list. And I'm going to formulate it by going to the second distribution button and scrolling up to the binomial probability density function and pressing enter. The values that we're going to be inputting here are that there are going to be 10 trials which relate to the 10 questions being guessed, true false, the probability of getting one correct is 50% or 0.5 and the x value that we're going to be finding the specific probability distribution for is in list 1. So we're going to put in the second list 1 and then come down and paste this and it pastes it to the formula bar. Now when I hit enter those probabilities are filled in in the list 2. If we now look at the values that are in list 2, and we can do that by using the down arrow, we see that the highest value in that list is approximately 0.25. So that tells us that when we graph this, the y value only has to be uh, around 1, the maximum y value, and it could even be as low as 0.5. To graph this, we'll go to the stat plot menu. When we go to the stat plot menu, we'll see that plot 1 is turned on and the other two plots are turned off. We'll select plot 1, and then in plot 1, after turning it on and using the down arrow to go to type, we'll select the histogram for the x list. We will use list 1, and for the list containing the frequencies, we'll use list 2. We can set the window based on the knowledge we have of what the graph should look like. The x minimum will make a negative 1, so that we have the first value of x that will be graphed in the histogram will be 0. And since the greatest number of possible correct answers is 10, we can set the x maximum at 12 to give a little more room on the right hand side of the graph. The x scale we can set at 1. The y minimum we can set at negative 0.3 and the reason for doing this by making the y minimum negative 0.3 we allow a little room below the graph to be able to read various things. The y maximum we can leave at 0.5 and the y scale at 0.1. And when we now hit the graph button, we have the graph 
of this binomial probability distribution for the problem that we stated. We can furthermore get an idea of what the values are by hitting the trace key. And we see that with the cursor in the area where the minimum value of x is negative 1 and the maximum value is less than 0, this would correspond to negative 1 correct answers, which is not possible. So therefore, going to the right, using the right arrow, we see that for this bar, we have a minimum of 0, the maximum is less than 1. So this is the bar that corresponds to zero correct answers. Likewise, the next using the right arrow and the trace key, we have the probability then of getting one correct answer in 10. We see that the probability for two correct answers and three and four and five, and we see that five is the mean of this binomial probability distribution. Since this is a completely symmetric distribution, this would be the balance point. The probability is approximately a quarter. We can also relate this to the formula for finding the mean of a binomial probability distribution being n times p, where n is 10 and p is 0.5, and therefore 10 times 0.5 is 5, which is the mean. So we can relate that to the formula. And the rest of the distribution also can be observed by using the trace key. We will now change the problem and investigate a similar problem, a 10 question, four choice, A through D multiple choice test. What is the likelihood of passing the test with a grade of at least 70 if you guess on every question? Since in the stat plot menu, there are three plots available to us, we'll use plot 2 and turn it on. Plot 2 is going to be formulated using the same L1 X list, but we'll instead put the frequencies for this probability distribution into list 3. I have it turned on, and what we need to do as well is to go to plot 1 and turn plot 1 off, hitting the right arrow to go to off and then hitting the enter key. Now with plot 2 turned on, I'm going to go to the stat enter key and in list number 3, when you first go there, it says you're looking at list number 3, entry number 1. I'll use the up arrow to go to the formula bar and here in the formula bar, we'll input the binomial probability distribution, going to second distribution, and then going to the binomial PDF, selecting it. Here the number of trials will be 10. The probability, since there are four choices, will be one quarter or 25% or 0.25. The x value is still in list one. The values from the binomial probability distribution will be put into list three, but the x values are still located in list one. And we go to paste. It pastes it into the list editor and hitting enter now gives us the probabilities for this binomial probability distribution. We see that the probability of getting none right has gone up to about 5.6%, up from under 1%. The probability of getting one right has gone up from approximately 1% to almost 19%. To get a better idea of what this binomial probability distribution looks like, we can now simply hit the graph button, since our window is going to be the same, and here we have the binomial probability distribution for four choice multiple choice tests. Answering the question as to what is the likelihood of passing the test with a grade of at least 70, one way to demonstrate what that idea looks like is to use the trace key. First x value that would be meaningful 
would be an x value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we see the probability of getting 7 right is about, well, 3 tenths of 1%. And the other probabilities for 8, 9, and 10 correct are all extremely small. You can do a comparison between this graph and the graph from the 10 question true false test by again going to the stat plot menu, second stat plot, and going to plot one and simply turning it on. And now when we hit graph, we see we have two graphs. It can be a little confusing. One is superimposed on the other. The first graph for the true false is the graph that you see here. Unfortunately, this doesn't allow us to uh, break it into different colors. And the graph for the second distribution uh, can be seen uh, superimposed. When we hit the trace key, uh, we have a, an ability to select either plot one or plot two by using the down arrow. And now if we were to use the right arrow to look at the probabilities, we see the probabilities being outlined. If we use the up arrow to go to plot one, we can do the same thing and then use the right arrow to look at the probabilities for the true-false test. Going back to stat plot and going to plot one and turning it off and going back to the graph, we can quickly go from one graph to the next. And to demonstrate the concept of the mean, we see that the mean is going to be the balance point. And it appears that the balance point uh, is going to be maybe right around here someplace. So that if we use the trace key and use the arrow to the right to see what value the mean would have, we would see that the mean is probably somewhere between 2 and 3. And using the formula for the mean, n times p, we have the n is 10 and the p is 0.25. So a mean of 2.5, somewhere between 2 and 3, makes some sense. If you like, we can go further and go to the stat enter button and go on to list four. And we can use list four to look at a five choice multiple choice test. If we look at a five choice multiple choice test with choices A through E, we can also answer the question about the likelihood of passing a test with a grade of 70. And we can graph that by again using the list editor with the cursor on the title for list 4 this time. And for list 4, we'll again use the binomial probability distribution by going to second function distribution and going up to the binomial PDF. And this time, since the number of choices is five, the probability of selecting is one chance in five or 0.2. The x value is still in list one. And when we paste, it's going to paste this into list four and hitting enter. We now have the probabilities for that binomial probability distribution problem. We can get a good idea of what the graph looks like by going to second function stat plot again. I'm going to turn off plot 2 by going to number 2 and going to the left to turn it off by hitting enter. You can go up to plot 3 by using the up arrow and then the right arrow to go to plot 3 and hit enter. And now turn this on. Again, the type is going to be the histogram. List 1 will be the X list and the frequencies are in list 4. And when I hit the graph key, here is my distribution. Again, we can use the trace key to find the probabilities, which are given here. So the probability of getting none right is almost 11%. 
The probability of getting one right is about 27%. The probability of getting two right is about 30%. So if we were to look at the average for this probability distribution, which is the balance point, it would be somewhere in this area. Uh, it looks like it would be pretty much at two. And we can again relate that to the formula for the mean, which is n times p, 0.2 times 10, or 2. To answer the question of the likelihood of passing with a 70, at least, we would go to the value of 7, and we notice that the probability of getting 7 is extremely small, and 8, and 9, and 10, uh, again, also small. We can look at the exact probabilities uh, using the table, using stat, enter, and we can scroll down and look at those exact values for the 7, 8, 9, and 10, and add these together. This can then also be related to the binomial cumulative density function using the second distribution and going up to binomial CDF. So hopefully this has been of some use to you in demonstrating how the TI-84 graphing calculator emulator can be used in your class to demonstrate the graph of the binomial probability distribution. Thank you for listening.